The number system most widely used in the world today is known as the Hindu-Arabic numerical system or decimal number system. Let's take a look. The decimal number system uses the 10 Hindu-Arabic symbols 0 through 9. In this place value system, the position of a digit to the left or right of the decimal point affects its value. This system is far superior to any other for today's complex business calculation. It derives its name from the Latin word decimus meaning tenth and decum meaning ten. The decimal system is based on tens with the starting point marked by a dot known as the decimal point. The major advantage of our decimal system over previous systems is that the position of the digit to the left or the right of the decimal point affects its value. This enables us to write any number with only the 10 single digit numbers 0 through 9. In this course, we'll work with the places to the left of the decimal point known as whole numbers. When whole numbers are written, a decimal point is understood to be located at the right of the number. For example, the number 27 is actually 27 point. This figure illustrates the 15 places and 5 groups of the decimal number system. Note that our system is made up of groups of 3 places, separated by commas, each with its own name. Whole numbers start at the understood decimal point and increase in value from right to left. Let's take a look at the steps of reading and writing whole numbers. Step 1. Beginning at the right side of the number, insert a comma after every three digits to mark the groups. Step 2. Beginning from left to right, name the digits and the groups. The units group and groups that have all zeros are not named. Step 3. When writing whole numbers in word form, the numbers from 21 to 99 are hyphenated, except for the decades, as an example 30. For example, 83 would be written as 80 hyphen 3. Approximations or rounded numbers are easier to refer to and remember. For example, if a grocery store carries 9,858 items on its shelves, you'd probably say that it carries 10,000 items. If you drive 1,593 miles, you'd say that trip is 1,600 miles. Another rounding application in business involves money. Rounded numbers are frequently used to estimate an answer to a problem before the problem is worked. Estimation approximates the exact answer. By knowing an estimate of the answer in advance, you'll be able to catch many math errors. When using estimation to pre-work a problem, you'll generally round off to the first, the leftmost digit, which is called rounding all the way. Once you've rounded to the first digit, perform the indicated math procedure. This can often be done quickly and give you a ballpark or general idea of the actual answer. Here are the steps for rounding whole numbers to a specified place value. Step 1. Determine the place to which the number is to be rounded. Addition is the mathematical process of computing sets of numbers to find their sum or total. The numbers being added are known as addends, and the result or answer of addition is known as the sum, total, or amount. The plus symbol represents addition and is called the plus sign. Here are the steps for adding whole numbers. Step 1. Write the whole numbers in columns so that you line up the place values, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. Step 2. Add the digits in each column, starting on the right with the units column. Step 3. When the total in a column is greater than 9, write the units digit and carry the tens digit to the top of the next column to the left. 
Generally, when adding the digits in each column, we add from top to bottom. An easy and commonly used method of verifying your addition is to add the numbers again, but this time from bottom to top. By adding the digits in reverse order, you'll reduce the chance of making the same mistake twice. Subtraction is the mathematical computation of taking away or deducting an amount from a given number. The original or top number is the minand, and the amount we're subtracting from the original number is the subtractand, and the answer is the difference, sometimes called the remainder, although difference is preferred. The minus symbol represents subtraction and is called the minus sign. Here are the steps for subtracting whole numbers. Step 1. Write the whole numbers in columns so that the place values line up. Step 2. Starting with the units column, subtract the digits. Step 3. When a column cannot be subtracted, you must borrow a digit from the column to the left of the one you're working in. An easy and well-known method of verifying subtraction is to add the difference and the subtractand. If you subtracted correctly, this total will equal the minand. Multiplication of whole numbers is actually a shortcut method for addition. Multiplication is the combination of two whole numbers in which the number of times one is represented is determined by the value of the other. These two whole numbers are known as factors. The number being multiplied is the multiplicand, and the number by which the multiplicand is multiplied is the multiplier. The answer to a multiplication problem is the product. Intermediate answers are also called partial products. In mathematics, the times sign, represented by the symbols x or a dot or parenthetical statements, is used to indicate multiplication. For example, 12 times 18 can be expressed as the following. Here are the steps for multiplying whole numbers. Step 1. Write the factors in columns so that the place's values line up. Step 2. Multiply each digit of the multiplier, starting with the units, times the multiplicand. Yield a partial product whose units' digits appear under the corresponding digit of the multiplier. Step 3. Add the digits in each column of the partial products, starting on the right with the units column. When multiplying any number times 0, the resulting product will always be 0. For example, 537 times 0 is 0. When multiplying a number times 1, the product is that number itself. For example, 1,844 times 1 is 1,844. When a number is multiplied by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and so on, simply attach the zeros from the multiplier to the end of that number. For example, 792 times 100, two zeros, is 79,200. When the multiplicand and or the multiplier have zeros at the end, multiply the two numbers without the zeros and attach the number of zeros to the product. For example, 130, one zero, times 90, one zero, equals 11,700. To check your multiplication for accuracy, divide the product by the multiplier. If the multiplication was correct, this will yield the multiplicand. For example, use a table like this. Division of whole numbers is the process of determining how many times one number is contained within another number. The number being divided is called the dividend. The number doing the dividing is the divisor, and the answer is known as the quotient. When the divisor only has one digit, as in 100 divided by 5, it is called short division. When the divisor has more than one digit, as in 100 divided by 10, it is known as lawn division. The division symbol represents division and is known as the division sign. For example, 12 divided by 4 is read as 12 divided by 4. 
This is also read as 12 divided by 4. To actually solve the division, we use the sign Q. The problem is written as 12Q4. Here's how the dividend, divisor, and quotient interact. The dividend over the divisor equals the quotient. When the divisor divides evenly into the dividend, it's known as even division. When the divisor does not divide evenly into the dividend, the answer then becomes a quotient plus a remainder. The remainder is the amount left over after the division is completed. This is known as uneven division. To verify division, we multiply the quotient by the divisor. If the problem is worked correctly, this will yield the dividend. To verify uneven division, multiply the quotient by the divisor and add the remainder to the product. If the problem was worked correctly, this will yield the dividend. Here are your steps for dividing whole numbers. Step 1. Determine the first group of digits in the dividend that the divisor will divide into at least once. Divide and place the partial quotient over the last digit in that group. Step 2. Multiply the partial quotient by the divisor. Place it under the first group of digits and subtract. Step 3. Form the dividend. Bring down the next digit after the first group of digits. And Step 4. Repeat steps 1, 2, and 3 until all of the digits in the dividend have been brought down.